At the beginning of the year, we thought this defense was going to be a top 10 defense. Craig, what does the Browns need to do? I mean, they can't stop the run. They continue. I mean, Shelton was supposed to be that top that top pick to help them stop the run, but they're still 180 yards again to, uh, yesterday. I mean, yeah, they won, but they continue to struggle. Well, and that's, that's the one thing. I'm, you know, I watch the game, and I do my best to analyze it, but uh, I, I, I largely have to rely on the experts to, to really tell me what's going on because it seems to me that the defensive line actually played a little bit better yesterday. It seemed like they were playing almost more of a 4-3 in a lot of cases. Is, so the question is, is it the linebackers filling in the gaps behind them? Is that the problem? Is it the defensive line not getting off blocks? Um, there are too many variables for a layman. You know, I, I watch a lot of football, but I, it's hard for me to look at tape and understand exactly what's going on in each play. Well, they wasn't getting all blocks. They were getting blocked downfield. They were getting, there wasn't no push up front all the time. And then Paul, you, you can't keep dropping Paul Kruger. You can't do that. But they just feel like he can keep dropping and it's going to be fine. Like he looks very slow out there, lethargic, like he has no wheels. Well, and he's paid to rush the passer. He's, yeah, not, that, he's not paid to cover uh, a running back, a running back or a tight end. No, he's yeah. paid to sack the quarterback. I, I don't understand well, why actually, we're dropping the coverage. It was the fullback that outflanked him, and, you know, he got in the touchdown. I was, I was like, come on, man. Like, I'm not going to have this guy drop, and I'm going to have him going after the quarterback. Hey, Craig, plug your uh, waiting for next year real quick, and uh, what, what do you got going on the site? Um, well, we, we have our weekly winners and losers, and, uh, of course, you can check out all the, uh, the podcasts, uh, at the official Waiting for Next Year podcast on iTunes, and, uh, and that's really what I pump up every time I get the chance. That's, that's kind of my bread and butter is doing the podcast. So, Thanks, man. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week. All right. Have a good one, guys. Take care, Craig. Let's go to Skype One. Kenny Rota standing by. Kenny, how do you fix this defense? Skype one. I have a question for Pierre. How yes, soon do other teams now, uh, in watching the game film, starting you know with the Browns' offense, how soon do they realize that Gary Barnage is the favorite target of Josh McCown and start putting maybe two guys on him, or can you not do that because of Travis Benjamin's deep threat? Uh, because uh, you know this. Uh, teams watch film, they want to take away your strengths and force you to beat them with your weaknesses. So uh, how soon do you think defenses start realizing right, right that away. while he's not Antonio Gates or when Tony Gonzalez was in the league, he is a key part of this offense? They can do it right away because um, as far as right now, Burnish is a, is a big target. And, I mean, uh, Travis Benjamin is another guy. But Travis didn't have the game like he had in previous weeks, so Burnish is doing very well. Denver is definitely going to put some guys on him to make sure let's not let this guy get off. He's a big target for him, and if he catches the ball and get, get this, this offense going, then we're going to have problems. And then the next thing you know, here's the backs out the backfield. We need to start putting Duke Johnson on some angle routes, beating the linebacker, setting him up where he can beat him, go, go outside, and then come back inside and get more yards downfield, especially if you can get Burns to run those guys off. Well, how oh, absolutely. You run that, the old uh, wheel route, too. Bring him out of the backfield on a delay uh, wheel route down the sideline and, and get him maybe for a big gain or two with his speed and his nice hands. Yeah, but 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 Denver has some good defensive backs. They don't yeah. have no guys back there to slouch compared to what Baltimore had. Baltimore used to have good defensive backs. They have okay defensive backs. How, how much do you guys think that McCown he's a, does a great job of spreading the ball around? That might help Barnage in the long run, too. I mean, like you said, you got Benjamin. He's that deep threat. I mean, you, you have Hawkins, who's catching five or six balls a game, and now you have Duke Johnson. So, I mean, you really can't key on Barnage. Right, I mean, I know he's had a great – Oh, Denver I think you team. can. But I, I, I'm not right. sold on the other guys yet. Yeah, uh, right Yesterday now. against uh, a banged-up uh, Baltimore defense, they, they did a nice job. If I'm the opposition, I, I'm focusing on, uh, you know, Travis Benjamin and Barnage, and if the other guys beat me, so be it. Uh, so I need to see that on a consistent basis. But the, you're right, he did spread the ball around yesterday. I think nine different guys caught the football yesterday, and that's what you're going to have to do on a team that doesn't have uh, a true number one, two, or three wide receiver. It's like Burnage is becoming a true number one for him right now. And um, in second, and just, it's going to be the backs. Um, Travis, is, if he gets open and he gets downfield the way he needs to, 
I just think we need to have some more option routes for um, for, for Andrew Hawkins and uh, Gabriel. Run some plays like how New England runs with their slot receivers and uh, get those guys open. When, when I look at this Browns team, I, I see progress being made offensively. I don't, and going back to your original question to me, Eric, I don't see it being made defensively. Uh, when you give up 30 points again, uh, you're lucky to win that game, but you did get the victory, uh, which is great. So you'll take it any way you can get it if you're the Browns right now. But defensively, the secondary, I mean, think about the receiver. I can't even name you the receivers that caught balls yesterday for Baltimore. That's how banged up they were. And these guys uh, are catching passes from Joe Flacco. Uh, you, you look at that defensive line, 181 yards rushing again. Is it the line? Is it the linebackers? Is it the combination of the two? Solomon was back, but then he got hurt. You've got Kruger. Uh, he's not good against the run. He, his job is to go get the quarterback. Mingo, I don't he know what played. he's good. He, he can jump. We saw that yesterday. So he deflected a ball at the goal line. So uh, the run defense is still a major concern. It was the worst last year in the league, and it's bad again this year. Yeah, but let me go back to Barnage. I know you want to break here real quick. I just want to bring up this about Barnage. He's the only guy over six foot. And as I watched that touchdown catch yesterday, I said this is the only guy in the wide receiving core, maybe Hartline, Dwayne Bowe, if he could actually get on the field, that gives you a little bit of height. That's why you have to use Barnage and just assume that he is your big wide out rather than a tight end. Kenny, you with me on that or no? In certain routes, yeah. he's not going to be able to you know, spread out wide and go deep for you. He can beat the linebackers, but I don't know if he can beat the corners uh, and the safeties if they start adjusting and putting a guy uh, on him like that. So, uh, yeah, he's the, he's the big target right now. And if you had him in FanDuel or DraftKings uh, the last few weeks, you, you scored some serious points and maybe won yourself some money. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, to he was killer on FanDuel. Hang on, I'll tell you. Uh, I have him, a fan, I have him on my regular him. team. And he has him. He's in my Yahoo League. I've had him for a couple weeks in my Yahoo. I picked him up two weeks ago. Good for you. Um, and, but that was only because I needed a tight end. And if you watch during the preseason, you saw that chemistry with him and Josh. And as long as Josh was the quarterback, you knew that Barnage would have the opportunity to make some plays. All right, uh, Kenny, I'm going to take a couple phone calls here real quick, so hang okay. on a second. Uh, let's go to – where do you want to go first, Eric? Uh, let's go to uh, Mike Mance from uh, Frederick, Maryland, Browns. Mike Mance, Frederick, Maryland, Brownsbackers. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hey, pretty good. Pretty hey, Mike, good. before we get into my conversation with you, I'd like to ask all of our Brownsbackers groups, where do you meet every Sunday? And if anybody wants more information, how do they meet you? Go. Yeah, uh, the Frederick Brownsbackers meet at a great Mexican restaurant called Los Del Tecos. Los Del great Tecos? Great Mexican food. Margaritas are excellent and good old uh, Seco draft for 22 ounces for 350. All right, and that is in Baltimore proper or no? No, that is not. That is in Frederick, Maryland. Oh, it's in Frederick, it's about sorry. 30 miles from Baltimore. It's in between D.C. and Baltimore. All right, Mike, tell me a little bit about the atmosphere yesterday and what you guys thought after the Browns got the win. Oh, my God, I know. I'm not ranting today, I'm raving. Pun on words <laughs> about the game yesterday. Let's uh, look at some, just look at the stats. Uh, sh shattered record for passing yards in game 457, as we all know. Browns quarterback to pass 300 yards in three consecutive games. Uh, beat the Baltimore Ravens first time since 2007, and making the Baltimore Ravens team have a one and four record. Living in Frederick, Maryland, oh, is that a sweet to my ears? How many Ravens fans were at the bar yesterday, or at the restaurant? Ravens? Uh, not many. We took a, this is a little Mexican restaurant. We have about uh, 50 members there, and we took over the bar. We Good. loved it. All right. Uh, as we move forward, what is your confidence level in this team? Look, I know it's a, a win, and a big divisional win, but it hopefully gives us momentum for another big game next Sunday going against uh, the 5-0 and Denver Broncos. Last vic victory against the, uh, them was a 30-29 on October 8, 1990. And uh, we're still, we still need more work, of course, like I heard other guys saying. Defense, especially against the run. And penalties got to come down. And, uh, but I think the team is going in the right direction. All right. Hey, Mike, uh, congratulations to everybody, you and in, 
uh, in your Browns backers group in Frederick, Maryland. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day. Go Browns. Hey, hey, one more thing. Sure. If anybody's coming this way, uh, going either to Baltimore or Washington, they got to come straight through Frederick. Stop by and at our nice little bar and join the group. All right, we definitely will. Thank you. Let's uh, support the Frederick Browns uh, uh, backers club there in Maryland. Mike, thank you so much. All right, let's go back to Baltimore. I mean, we spent a lot of time there. Uh, Charles Croson, is that our next guest? Yes, Eric? from WMAR, our script sister station. All right, well, let's pop it up. Let's go to Skype One, and we'll be checking with Charles. Hey, Charles, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. No, wor no worries, guys. Hope you're having a good morning. Oh, we are. Hey, first of all, love your set back there. Looking good. <laughs> this is our. Uh, this is actually one of our sports shows, and we, uh, we, we kind of farm it out, the press box. It's a pretty popular show here in Baltimore, and we've got our crews working over in Studio A, so I just wanted to give them some peace and quiet while I talk to you guys. Well, that was nice of you. Uh, did you get a chance to watch the game yesterday? Just your thoughts on the Browns-Ravens. Uh, Browns-Ravens, watch the game. Uh, it's really indicative of what you've seen with Baltimore so far this year. We knew from the beginning uh, the secondary was going to be susceptible uh, to the tune of 450 yards. I don't think that was what people were expecting. Uh, but the big question mark for Baltimore all season has been uh, defensive backs, Ladarius Webb getting a bit older, Jimmy Smith susceptible to injury, still haven't found someone to fill that safety, uh, safety spot here in Baltimore. Um, the concerns were probably realized even more yesterday with Cleveland. And look, I mean, you give a shout-out to Josh McCown. Frankly, guys, I didn't even know he was still in the league. Wow. And to come out and throw for 450 was certainly impressive. So were you disappointed because there's a feeling here in Northeast Ohio that people want to see Johnny Manziel on the field. Were you bummed out that Johnny Manziel was not the quarterback yesterday? Well, see, I'm an SEC guy. I graduated from the University of Arkansas. So when you see the other SEC quarterbacks there uh, with those opportunities, yeah, you cast kind of a, a, a wanton eye. Maybe they'll get a chance to play. But look, I mean, petton has been honest about this with you guys from the beginning and the fans there in Cleveland. Uh, he's not ready. And Manziel is a project. He's going to have to learn to be an NFL quarterback. Uh, disappointed? Not really. Not really, I don't think. But uh, anytime you have a chance to see someone with the talent level and the skill set of a John, Johnny Manziel play, uh, it'd be nice to see it. And, and when the time's right, maybe he'll get to play. Charles Grossen joining us. He's morning anchor at uh, WMAR, sister station in Baltimore. Um, you know, Wilbert Montgomery, who spent some time there, who's the Browns running back coach here, said that when he was with the uh, when he was with the Ravens, I think is when he was there. What he said that when we would play the Browns, all we need to do is just play our regular game, and the Browns will screw things up at the end to lose. Is that kind of the same philosophy you were feeling yesterday as we were heading towards overtime, or even at the end of regulation? Well, the thing is, if you go back and look at the game itself from the box score and the the, the timing standpoint, Baltimore had extended uh, a 21-9 lead there through the through the third quarter, so it appeared. Baltimore was holding true to script, play their game, rely on four set from the backfield, uh, moderate passing from Flacco, still trying to find those receivers there. They've got so many injuries there, Steve Smith out too. So it appeared Baltimore was playing to script. What broke script was what Josh McCown and the Browns started doing in the second half uh, as they just started throwing the ball all over the yard. Something McCown had said they felt they were going to be able to do early in the week. They thought they were going to be able to get to Baltimore's secondary. It played out in the second half. But up until the point you were talking about, uh, when, it, when Baltimore had that 21-9 lead, it appeared it was going to play out like all Browns-Ravens games had in the past. Yeah, it felt like 21-3 was going to be. I, I, thought, I thought Baltimore was going to go up 21-3 and it was going to be game over. Yeah, well, I'm just happy Steve Smith didn't play. Right. Thank goodness for that. Well, we've talked about this before here in, in the station and among those here who are Ravens fans. Uh, one of the problems Baltimore has, and it's not so much, it's not so much evident now, uh, given the Browns game and the Steelers game. Uh, in the Steelers game, Justin Forsett ran for 150 yards. In the Browns against you guys yesterday, he ran for 121 uh, before getting injured there in the fourth. So he sort of emerged as the running back uh, Ravens fans and the coaching staff had expected. Uh, but prior to that, uh, when your best when your best player is a five foot nine, thirty six year old receiver who says he's retiring, you might have some problems on offense. Hey Amen. Hey Charles, thank you so much. We appreciate your time, and uh, the press box is looking good. Looking good. I right, appreciate you guys. Have a good day. Uh, you too. Take care. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Appreciate it. Uh, that is Charles Croson, our morning anchor at uh, WMAR. The script.